Dear students, welcome to the SDK Health Sciences Biochemistry classes. Today our topic is bioenergetics, phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation and substrate level phosphorylation. First of all, we will define bioenergetics. Bioenergetics is the study of energy transformation that took place during the biochemical reaction. It is also called biochemical thermodynamics. The human and animal metabolic system capture chemical energy from food stuff such as carbohydrate, lipid and proteins and then use this chemical energy to power the living uh, processes. So this is the food stuff, carbohydrate, lipid and protein and these are the metabolic processes and then during the metabolic processes they get energy and this energy is utilized for living processes processes this study of energy system is known as bioenergetics now energy is in the form of energy is in the form of atp so human being human being food stuff carbohydrate lipid protein then metabolic process metabolic process then energy this energy is in the form of ATP how we get energy the process is called phosphorylation phosphorylation So, the living system utilizes food stuff like carbohydrate, lipid and protein. They put all these carbohydrate, lipid and protein into the metabolic processes. With the metabolic processes, they release energy. This energy is in the form of ATP. The process by which we get this ATP is known as phosphorylation. How many types of the phosphorylation are there? Two types of the phosphorylation are there. One is substrate level phosphorylation, another is oxidative phosphorylation. One is substrate level phosphorylation and another is oxidative phosphorylation. So, let me summarize it here. Carbohydrate, a lipid protein broken down in the catabolic process to water, smaller molecule, water, carbon dioxide and ammonia and release energy in the form of direct form that is ATP this mechanism is called substrate level phosphorylation or indirectly they release hydrogen these hydrogen are accepted by the hydrogen acceptors and then when they accept the hydrogen they become reduced and these reduced equivalents enter into the mitochondria and in the mitochondria they enter into the electron transport chain and then in electron transport chain they give us more energy. So this system is called oxidative phosphorylation. So as we said phosphorylation is of two types. One is substrate level phosphorylation another is oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation. Now, substrate level phosphorylation, what happened here in the substrate level phosphorylation? The energy is generated at the site of the reaction. So, reaction in the reaction, A is converted, substrate A is converted into product B. When substrate A is converted into product B with the help of some enzyme, this much amount of the energy is released that it attach inorganic phosphate with the ADP to form ATP. As this reaction is so much powerful that it causes the release of so much energy that that can adhere, that can attach this phosphate, inorganic phosphate or phosphate directly which is coming from the source with the ADP and make ATP. This type of the phosphorylation is called substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation. So what happened here? What happened here in the substrate level phosphorylation? That a high energy bond is formed. 
while the substrate is being uter oxidized. ATP is then generated at the expense of this high energy bond. So what happened here? That for example, in a reaction substrate A is converted into product B and then during this conversion ADP is phosphorylated to make ATP because the ATP is synthesized during the reaction at the site of the substrate that's why we call it substrate level phosphorylation. What are the example? We have some example for this. Say for example 1, 3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate with the help of enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. One of the phosphate which was at the position 1 will go and attach to this ADP and then this ADP will be converted into ATP. We will see the pictorial exam, uh, pictorial examples in the in, in few seconds. Another example is phosphoenol pyruvate with the help of enzyme pyruvate kinase will convert into enol pyruvate pyruvate and then what will happen? This phospho, phosphate of the phosphoenol pyruvate, this phosphate of the phosphoenol pyruvate will attach to this ATP and then it will convert into ATP. These two are the example of glycolysis pathway. Glycolysis pathway. The third example is of citric acid cycle pathway. Succinyl CoA. This reaction is so much powerful, which is catalyzed by the enzyme succinate thiokinase, that it will adhere one inorganic phosphate and adhere this inorganic phosphate with the ADP to make ATP and convert succinyl CoA into succinic acid. So this is the reaction of TCA cycle or citric acid cycle. This is the example. Example number one, one three base phosphoglycerate. See here, these are th th three carbon compound, one, two, and three. Position number one has a phosphate. Position number three has a phosphate. One three base phosphoglycerate. And then with the help of enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase, phosphoglycerate kinase, position one phosphate will come and attach to this one to make ATP. And then 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate. This is called substrate level phosphorylation. Another example, phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate or enol pyruvate. So this is phosphoenol pyruvate. At position 2, there is a phosphate here. 3-carbon compound. 3-carbon compound. With the help of enzyme pyruvate kinase, this phosphate will come and attach to ADP, the ADP will convert into ATP and then phosphoenol pyruvate will convert into pyruvate. And this is the another example of substrate level phosphorylation. The third reaction which was a TCA cycle reaction, which is a TCA cycle reaction where a succinyl CoA, 4 carbon compound, carbon 1, 2, 3 and 4 carbon compound is converted into succinate, is converted into succinate and then with the help of enzyme succinate thiokinase. Now this reaction is again high energy reaction, a powerful reaction and it will bring inorganic phosphate attached to ADP and then convert it into ATP. CoA will be released. This is again an example of substrate level phosphorylation. So, we say that ATP is formed by the phosphorylation process, phosphorylation and phosphorylation is of two types. One is substrate level phosphorylation, another is oxidative phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation took place at the site of the reaction, at the site of the reaction whether it is mitochondria or cytoplasm. However, oxidative phosphorylation only took place in mitochondria. Mitochondria. So, oxidative phosphorylation. Or, we, also, we, also, we will also see the electron transport chain. 
or the respiratory chain. So oxidative phosphorylation it is a process by which ATP is formed as electrons are transferred from NADH reducing equivalent or FADH2 reducing equivalent to oxygen with the help of the series of electron carriers and this mechanism took place in electron transport chain it is also called respiratory chain and it is present in the inside of the mitochondria inner mitochondria inner mitochondrial membrane like this so here the electron etc is present this is the etc complex the system is carried out by the help of the enzyme and electron carriers and these electron carriers and enzyme are located here in the inner mitochondrial membrane inner mitochondrial membrane in the electron transport chain in the electron transport chain so the process is very simple the process is very simple say for example here we oxidize the carbohydrate fat and protein we know that there will be different mechanisms we can get energy directly in the form of ATP we can have Na DPH which will be used for synthetic processes the end product will be carbon dioxide to water and ammonia like this but in the middle of the way what will happen hydrogen will also be released as this we discussed earlier and this hydrogen will be captured by the hydrogen acceptor like NAD and FAD NAD will take hydrogen and will convert into NADH2, NADH and H, one is ionic form, another FAD will convert into FADH, FADH2 and then these reducing equivalents, if they are inside the mitochondria, there is no issue because they are also, they are present in the mitochondria and then they will be, they will enter into the electron transport chain and when they will enter into the electron transport chain, they will release their hydrogen they will release their hydrogen and they become oxidized. So NADH will convert into NAD, NADH will convert into NAD and FADH will convert into by releasing its hydrogen FAD. And this hydrogen will enter into the electron transport chain and will the movement of these electron transport chain in this cycle they release energy and this energy is so much that it will pick the inorganic phosphate attached with the ADP and this process is called phosphorylation so they will make ATP because this phosphorylation is a combination with the oxidation so that's why it's called oxidative phosphorylation so it has two components number one is oxidation oxidation of the food stuff energy release energy release and then this energy release cause the phosphorylation ADP plus inorganic phosphate to ATP so it is a coupled mechanism it is a coupled mechanism oxidation plus phosphorylation so this part is oxidation and the rest of the part is for the, the, the rest of the part is phosphorylation so this is the example of oxidative phosphorylation here you can see that succinate a four carbon substrate With the help of enzyme succinate dehydrogenase is converted into fumarate again a four carbon substrate but here you can see here that hydrogen from here and hydrogen from here is taken up by the FADA and then FAD is converted into FADH2 in the next step what will happen that this FADH2 this is a reduced form of the FADH2 it will be oxidized to FAD by releasing its two hydrogen and these two hydrogen will enter into the electron transport chain and then they will move in the electron transport chain and they will release energy and this energy will be so much that it will cause the addition of this inorganic phosphate to the ADP the process which is called phosphorylation to make ATP as this mechanism is coupled with the oxidation and phosphorylation that's why it's called oxidative phosphorylation dear students so now what we have done up till now 
that we discussed the phosphorylation and we said that phosphorylation is of two types one is oxidative another is substrate level substrate level is at the site of the reaction and it is the production of ATP directly from the ATP production of ATP directly from the ADP either the phosphate is coming from the substrate directly to it or the substrate may be from the in the form of inorganic phosphate if the reaction is strong enough however on the other hand we have oxidative phosphorylation we are reducing equivalence NADH and FADH2 enter into the electron transport chain and they move in the electron transport chain they liberate energy and this energy energy causes the addition of inorganic phosphate with the ADP and it makes ATP in this type of the situation one NADH give us three ATP three ATP whereas FADH2 give us two ATP this mechanism will be very simple if NADH and FADH2 they are present in mitochondria so there will be no issue that these NADH2 and FADH2 will enter directly into the electron transport chain and move into the electron transport chain their electrons will move into the electron transport chain and will give us ATP however if the NADH is outside this mitochondria in the cytoplasm so then in this situation we need to transfer this NADH2 into mitochondria normally this NADH is not permeable cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane so in this situation we want to transfer the electron from this NADH to the mitochondria and it is done with the help of shuttle pathways it is done with the help of shuttle pathways dear students we will stop here at this point and in the next session we will discuss the shuttle pathways that how NADH is transferred with the help of the shuttle pathway into mitochondria just to let you know that there are two kinds of the shuttle pathways one is malate shuttle another is glycerophosphate shuttle thank you very much and best of luck kindly send us your feedback and comments your comments and feedback will help us to improve our next session